Hi, this is Linda Hitt. Um, we're going to take a look at contingencies and focus mostly on loss contingencies, which are often current liabilities. So what exactly are loss contingencies? Um, basically, in this current period, in the current, current accounting period, something has happened to either create the, the likelihood of having, whoops, having a liability coming down the road or having to pay out cash, which would mean fewer assets. And so it's not a favorable thing. Um, and if things continue, then we may have to, we may have to settle and pay. Examples would be if we're being sued, if we have some kind of fines or penalties from the government or tax uh, audit, and it's likely that we're going to have to, you know, be uh, fined or assessed. Um, um, so there's many different things that can happen. A, simp a basic thing is really bad debts. When we look at our own receivables, our own billing system, there's a certain percentage we know that will be bad debts. So the, the basic deal here is if it's, you know, it's really likely and large amount and, you know, all the ducks are in a row, you're actually going to record it, journalize it this period, even though it's not completely settled. And the basic journal entry is to debit a loss and credit a liability. So it's basically an accrued expense. Um, other levels, we may only have to footnote and disclose it. And in some cases, we do nothing. Um, so what are some of the, the variables that we need to look at? Well, if it's a large amount, and that's materiality versus something that's immaterial, if we're a large company, a large amount could still be immaterial. So they used to kind of use a 5% rule compared to, you know, if you were looking at um, lost assets, if it was at least 5% of your total assets, then it would be considered material. Um, it is professional judgment, and I'm sure you know different auditors may have slightly different takes. But if it's a small amount, then we who cares? We don't need to do anything about it. Um, and then they sort of looked at the likelihood of something happening, with probable being the highest. I've forgotten. It's like 70, 80 percent. It's over half. Um, reasonably possible is less likely, and remote is very unlikely. As you might guess, if it's remote, we don't have to worry about it. If it's immaterial, we don't have to worry about it. So the question then is, what's what do we do about probable and reasonably possible? So we've already mentioned that um, the journal entry is done when, when everything is true, where it's probable, material, and we can estimate it. And we use the low end of the range of estimates, unless there's one number that kind of sticks out as the most likely. We footnote if something is probable, but we can estimate it and it's material, or it's reasonably possible at a material amount. Um, the do-nothings fall with remote and not material. Um, there are a few things that we footnote, like guarantees of certain things, even if the amount is small. So this is done, of course, to fully explain to the statement reader um, what's what's happening. We sort of warn investors and people who read the statements that these potential things exist that may make the statements look less favorable in the future. So we really are looking at conservatism as a concept. Gain contingencies, on the other hand, is a situation where something favorable hopefully will happen in the future, where we may um, decrease our liabilities or increase our assets. So we might be suing somebody else or we may be settling in favor with an insurance claim where we're going to receive more than the book value that we have. Um, as no surprise, um, something like this translates to a gain or revenue, and we don't journalize revenues usually until we're that the event is completed and we're really certain we're going to, you know, likely to get the cash. Um, so we actually might rec wait, wait until it's realized, which means the cash is actually settled because we may not know for sure how much we're going to have for the gain until that time comes. So here are some examples of contingencies. Um, I just kind of listed them and I thought we could look at them, think about them, and then come up with a solution for each one. Um, in the first case, our company is suing a supplier for the material amount of $500,000. Our legal counsel estimates it's probable probable they will settle out of court for between 350 and 400 with no one amount um, known. 
Okay, so we're going to assume that this is a material. Um, we've got a range, we can estimate it. Um, it's probable, so that's pretty high. Um, so if you put it all together, then we would normally be journalizing it if we were suing somebody else. But here's a case where we're suing. And so it's really a gain contingency. And as we've mentioned already, we're not going to journalize it until it's finalized. And often that means when you actually collect the cash. Okay, had we been sued, <laughs> we would have had to journalize this. Okay, number two, we're being sued by a customer for the material amount of a million. Our legal counsel feels it is probable we will lose 800,000, the most likely amount, though the range could be 750 to 850. So we got one amount singled out as the most likely. Uh, it's probable, so that's pretty high, very likely that's going to happen. And of course, it's certainly a material amount. Um, so it looks like we're hitting all the highest levels here. And if so, then we should see a journal entry for this type of loss contingency. Um, because we have one single amount, we're going to pull out the 800,000 and debit estimated loss, credit estimated liability for 800,000. Um, if we didn't know a particular amount that was more probable, we would have gone with the lowest number of the range, which is 750,000, and would have used that in the journal entry. Okay, number three, the federal government is investigating. It's reasonably possible they'll fine us a material amount of 900,000, um, the most likely amount which falls in that range of 800,000 to 950. Okay, so we're looking for the, the key things here. It's material. We can estimate it, and it's reasonably possible. Okay, if you remember reasonably possible, we're not going to journalize. That does not meet the, the threshold for an actual journal entry. So it looks like one that's likely to be footnoted um, and information given on it. There's so many footnotes, we, again, we can't create a footnote for every possible thing. Um, number four, it's estimated that material amount of 500000 of accounts receivable will not be collected, and our most important customer um, who owes us this money was just declared bankrupt at the end of this year. So this is above and beyond our normal percentage of estimate for bad debts. Um, there is some chance we will still collect from that person, from that customer, um, 10 cents on the dollar. Okay, so we have a material amount um, with a customer being bankrupt it seems like we should have a probable situation that we're not going to collect on all of it. We may get a part of it. Um, so it looks like something we need to, to address. And so we do record a journal entry, debit loss, credit liability. Um, but maybe a suggestion would be since we there's still a chance we'll get 10 cents on a dollar, if we take 10% of 500000 um, that's going to give us 450000 Take subtract out the 10 cents on a dollar. And so to be conservative, we're picking only 450000 So we're debiting loss for 450000 crediting liability for 450 Okay, and then we're back to number, we're up to number five. There's a remote chance that the EPA will give us a penalty for improper waste removal, and this would be estimated to cost a million dollars. Okay, material amount, we can estimate it, um, but there's a remote chance. Okay, that doesn't sound very high. Um, there's probably a remote chance of a lot of things happening. So because it's remote, very extremely unlikely, we're going to do nothing, <laughs> which is a nice thing to have so we don't have to make an entry or so forth. And then the last one we have here is due to a city violation, it's probable that we will be fined next year for events occurring this year for an immaterial amount of $1,000. Okay, we can estimate it. Um, it's probable, but because the amount is small, it's considered immaterial, then we're going to treat that as it is a loss contingency, but we're actually not going to worry about journalizing, certainly, or footnoting. Okay.